this video I'd like to talk about WhatsApp, or more specifically, what's up with WhatsApp. Recently there's been a lot of coverage in the media with regards to a so-called security vulnerability in WhatsApp. Specifically, The Guardian covered an article on the 13th of January 2017, and this has since been picked up by a lot of social media sites, including Twitter. So you've probably seen coverage on WhatsApp and you might be wondering, what is this so-called security vulnerability? Are my messages safe? What is this all about? So in order to get a better understanding of that, we first need to have a better understanding of encryption and the kind of encryption that WhatsApp specifically uses. Suppose you would like to send me a message, but you didn't want everyone else on the internet to see the message. How would you do that? Well, if I was to send you a message and I wanted to keep this a secret, I could take my message that says hello and utilize a key and an encryption algorithm. This would produce something called a ciphertext, which to everybody else looks like garbage. I could then provide you with the ciphertext and using our secret key and a decryption algorithm, you would be able to open the message from me and see that I had sent a message that says hello. Now the most common form of encryption out in the world at the moment is something called public key cryptography. This is slightly different to the model I've described it is something called asymmetric encryption. What happens when you want to send a message to someone but you don't want to provide them with the key because you can't get to the place that they're sitting at, you've never met them or it wouldn't be secure to do so? What you do is you generate a key pair. One is your public key and one is a private key. The public key is something that you publish out into the world and your private key is something that you keep private. So if I wanted to send a message that says hello, I could use your public key to encrypt the message. I would never need to know your private key and only you would be able to decrypt the message. But there's a further level to public key cryptography that allows me to verify that the message is definitely from you and it hasn't been corrupted in transit. And likewise, you would know that the message is definitely from me. And that is done utilizing two keys, so one key from each of our sets of key pairs. So for example, if I wanted to send you a message I would use my secret key to encrypt the message as well as your public key. You would then know for certain that this hadn't been tampered with in transport. WhatsApp uses a form of encryption called signal protocol. This is a type of public key encryption. Nothing wrong with this picture so far. Uh, so what is the issue exactly or the vulnerability? Well, what happens is that when I want to send you a message on WhatsApp, WhatsApp takes my phone number as my identity. Um, occasionally I might change devices, but I will still have your contact information. So at this point, my key pair will need to change because I've changed device. Now WhatsApp has an extremely large user database, so what they've chosen to, chosen to do is to allow users to specify if they would like to be notified when somebody's security code changes. So essentially, encryption is still in place, I can send you a message, but it's up to me as a user to verify that you are who you say you are. The Guardian claims that WhatsApp, as a result, is vulnerable to something called a man-in-the-middle attack. 
whereby person A and person B's communication is intercepted by person C, let's say an attacker. So, for example, if I wanted to send my message that says, hi, and I encrypt the message, and I want to send it to you, but suddenly someone else has got the message. At this point, that person with my message can impersonate me and pretend to be me when they're communicating with you. The trouble with this picture is that actually what happens is that uh, the user, so person B, is notified of a security code change if they've chosen to accept notifications. Secondly, it would be impossible for the attacker who's now pretending to be me to interpret any messages that I had sent before. In, in order for that to happen, person B would need to resend previous communications. WhatsApp ultimately made a pragmatic choice in their use of signal protocol, which doesn't have key continuity. This isn't really an issue per se, given the large amount of users and it is available for pretty much nothing. So as a consumer product, you can't be really expecting it to be foolproof. After all, we're probably all fools. So what does this mean? Well, it probably means that you shouldn't be sending anything that secret on your WhatsApp chats. So for example, do not send any personally identifiable information like your date of birth, your social security number and you probably shouldn't be sending any naked pictures of yourself unless of course you're happy for those to make their way out onto the internet. Lastly this raises an issue, an ethical issue, on how we report on technology and security news. The actual news behind the story is a vulnerability that was discovered by a researcher during the period of April to May 2016, The Guardian then penned an article in January of this year regarding the issue. So why would they do such a thing? Well, tabloids should be independent and provide well-researched articles, but this doesn't seem to be the case. So what's really going on here? Ultimately, it's important to understand that tabloids further than the needs of a few they're trying to grow their database of users and subscribers. So in this case, perhaps they weren't so much concerned with the content of their articles. Fear-mongering is a real issue in security for those that aren't aware. And ultimately, scared, vulnerable people are the least likely to make informed decisions.